Step one, who is considered a returning citizen? The term returning citizen and justice impacted individual are used to describe people who have been impacted by the criminal justice system. The goal in using this language is to be more inclusive. And the purpose of that is for us to begin to challenge the way that we see returning citizens and the way that we think about the issue and ultimately the way that we begin to address it. Now, one of the things that you'll find when talking about returning citizens is there are a few things that just leap out from the research. And one of those is the link between poverty and prison. And I'm talking about poverty, which is defined in this presentation primarily by the median annual income. And then what we look at is we see that people in state and federal prisons have a significantly lower median household income. That's the starting point. Secondly, what we find is that it's exacerbated. The problem itself of poverty is exacerbated by prison. And the consequence of prison is more unemployment because once a person has been incarcerated, it's much more difficult for them to find a job. Now, for some of us, we might think that because we're talking about um, returning citizens or incarcerated individuals, we're, we may be talking about a smaller number than most people imagine. Um, the fact is that there are 80 million Americans with a felony record. And I'd just like you to think about that for a second. Actually, Americans with a, a, a criminal record outnumber any ethnic minority group in the country. Think about that. The group is actually larger than any ethnic minority group. And so the number is significant. My point is it's a staggering number. And when you look a little deeper, one of the, a, a further disturbing fact that you find is that 64% of unemployed men in their 30s have a criminal record. What I'm pointing to is something that goes beyond race. We're talking about a group that's defined not by their religion, not by their heritage, not by their ethnicity, but by a criminal record. And it's important to understand that I'm, I'm saying that not with a sense of doom and gloom, but with a sense of hope in that we know that you as employers can make an amazing difference by offering second chances. And second chances is not just some abstract idea when we talk about employment and giving people an opportunity to uh, reinvent themselves, to turn their lives around uh, and become shining examples of what's possible. And that's why I have here um, the picture of Nelson Mandela, because in many ways, he embodies the best of what's possible uh, for someone who is a returning citizen. And I know some of you will think that Nelson Mandela is above this discussion. But the fact is, uh, he was a returning citizen as well. And in my own case, I, I became pen pals with his daughter, his oldest daughter, Makaziwi Mandela, while I was in prison, and then wrote to Nelson Mandela in South Africa. And in 1986, I made a commitment to his eldest daughter, Makaziwi, and to him that once I was released from prison in America and doing well, that I would move to South Africa 
and work in schools and prisons and with companies that hire returning citizens to honor his contribution to me and to many others like me in America's prisons. Well, 25 years later, I had an opportunity to move to South Africa and I reconnected with his eldest daughter, Makaziwi Mandela. I did all the things that I said I was going to do. And you know how? Because someone gave me a second chance. Someone like you, an employer, saw something in me and gave me a second chance. And when you give people a second chance, something amazing happens. Now, I talk about my story a bit, and I hope you go back and read or see my interviews and that and learn a little bit more because what I say is from a personal standpoint the turnaround for me was a, starting from a place of absolute unwavering personal accountability you see I I'm convinced that if you take absolute personal accountability for your choices and your circumstances it's almost impossible to, to feel like a victim. So what I did was I actually put that into practice in my own life. Rather than blaming others for being in prison, I took responsibility. I went on to earn my bachelor's and master's degree from Boston University. And I was in the same prison that Malcolm Little became Malcolm X. The fact of my conditions was a reflection of my choices. And the minute I understood that, change was inevitable. And so I hope you look at my own story and see that this presentation we're doing, um, second chances, the benefits of hiring returning citizens, I lived that. And it's important for you to understand that the presentation itself is drawn from a lived experience as much as it is my research. And I say the linchpin for all of this is second chances. Because when you as an employer decide to give someone a second chance, think about this. Here are some of the people, just a few, who were given second chances. Do you recognize anybody on that screen? I'm sure you do. What I'd like to leave you with in step one is the idea that the person sitting in front of you who's a returning citizen might well go on to be as a celebrated figure as anyone you see on this screen now. And I hope that you'll see in them something akin to the greatness that others saw in the people on this screen. Be part of that, be part of that change.